Let's take a look at the Creative Conversions 300 Series build. This is one tough upgraded truck that the All For Adventure team are going to test rigorously on Australia's toughest tracks. Here we are, this is the place. Now, I don't know about you guys, but um, when I started talking 300 series wagon Land Cruiser, okay, when they first come out now, you would have seen the video of the wagon build. Now, everyone thought that that was gonna be the next conversion, okay, that I was gonna convert that one. Well, I decided that I wasn't gonna convert the GR Sport, right? Because I really like it as a wagon. So what I go and do? Well, I stumbled across one of these things. It just came off the ship from Japan. It's a GXL white wagon, 300 series Land Cruiser. I've rocked up to Creative Conversions now. At Creative Conversions, you know as well as I know, for the past 10 years we've been working with them and they've been building some of the toughest trucks that I've ever owned. So for season 15 of All For Adventure, not only are we building a new truck for Simon, there's also gonna be a new truck for me so that I can tow some more gear on the show. So 300 series Land Cruiser, it's a GXL wagon. We're gonna convert it into a dual cab ute. Who better than Creative Conversions to do the ultimate touring machine? Let's do it. Jared from Creative Conversions takes us through the process. So today we've received Jason's 300 series GXL and it looks fantastic. The first thing we did was strip out all the interior to make sure that it's ready for when the body needs to be cut. Now, to cut a 300, you've got to use, you've got to use a specialized tradesman, okay? Now, behind me is Mitch. This is Mitch and he's been doing the 200s for years and now he's on to the 300, would you believe? Now, it's been stripped. Is it ready to go, Mitch? At this form, it's pretty much ready to go. You can just jump in and start cutting this car. Okay, so I did say to Mitch earlier, I said, Mitch, can I have a bit of a crack at chopping shit? You know what I mean? And he's like, yeah, all right, Jace, I'll let you have a couple of cuts, all right? Because I've always wanted to actually just hack into a 300 Land Cruiser. First of all, Mitch is gonna start cutting. What are you gonna cut first, mate? So first up, we'll start with the windows, pop the windows out. Pop the side windows? We'll mark our roof, yep. mark our lines, make sure it's all A-OK, -okay, and then yep. start hacking in with the, with the saw, mate. And, and how critical is the cut here? Like, how critical? Yeah, you gotta be pretty bang on the mark, mate. So okay. obviously- you reckon I'm up to it? We'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Oh, hang on, that didn't sound a little promising. So oh, let's let's get a window out, mate. Let's right, start with them, let's go. All right. We've got the work boots on today, see that? Got the work boots. All right, and I've got my special safety glasses. So I'm safety Sam today. Here we go, there's the first window. Window number two. So at the moment I'm just gonna cut this this rail out, because we've basically, basically got to cut straight through it. Oh, okay, so you'll take so, the rail out yep. before we make the roof cut. It makes it a lot right, easier. Straight down. Straight down. There we go. Well, that roof's done now. All right. Yeah. It's um, it's just about smoker anyway, mate, so I'm going to go over and grab a quick Are you off the smoker? Yeah, mate, it's bloody smoker. All right, so do you mind so, if, Can I just... Can I'll just keep going? Just don't do anything crazy, all right? I'll just, be back. Yeah, yeah okay, I'll keep going. Yeah, yeah, just don't do anything crazy. I'll be back in 15, all right? Yeah, yeah, all right. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, leave no, with you. you. You go, mate, you go. <laughs> he reckons I could keep going. I'll tell you what, I've got a better tool. Well, this is a big cutting tool, but I reckon I've got something better. And I don't know what Mitch was on about. He's saying something about he had some template going on. Mate, I've got other ideas for this truck. I'm gonna have a crack at trying to make it into something special. So let me get some tools. I brought my own tools this time. They come into these little saws, mate. I reckon I can make a big cut with this one real quick. Let's see if I can get this sucker started. Oh yeah, baby.
you done? What's that for? I was doing the chop, mate. Chop, we don't use that. What's Just, going oh, for Mitch, 15 Mitch, minutes? Mitch, Mitch, mate, I've been doing chops for years, mate. Years. I've been doing 200s, and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, I've got an idea for a 300. Like, right. I've got to do something different, mate. So just work with me here. Okay. I've made a few cuts. I can see that. I've made a few cuts. All right, come over here. Just work with me. Lift yeah. it off. Help me lift it off, mate. Help lift me lift this, this off. off. Yeah, lift yeah, just grab this up. bit. Lift up. That's it. Good joking. That's it. No, put it on the deck. Put it on the deck, mate. That's it. You cut the top of it. What about... I don't yeah, know if that's going to work. There's a tail. Yeah, look, tailgate. Oh, about... shit. I forgot about that bit. The hinge is on the top, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, shit. You can fix that. I went over the line a bit. Yes. You're a panel beater. Yeah, we'll make it work. We're going to need some hinges for here, mate. Yeah, you got a couple of hinges. We'll whack a couple of hinges on from Bunnings. Mate, it's perfect. I guess we'll make it work, mate. We can do that. All right. What do you reckon, mate? I reckon we keep going and we turn her into a buffalo catcher or something like that. I literally just take the roof off, cut the doors, plate them. Twin turbo buffalo catcher. I'm liking it, it's growing on me. Like it's really growing on me. What about like big tires, big meaty tires, lift kit? What do you reckon, roof rack? Yeah, we need yeah. a shorter roof rack, but we can make it work. Yeah. Remember, it was, right. it was just in my head. Like I was just cutting, I was just yeah. hacking, and it was just coming to me, eh? Hey? Just come to me like that. Once we tidied up Jason's handiwork, it was then moved to our chassis area where the chassis was prepared to be cut. Here, it received a 700 mm chassis extension, all the extra reinforcement that we put into the vehicle, as well as the reinforcement to the rear diff to ensure it can handle the extra weight and whatever else he's gonna throw it at on his big trips. From there, Jason's vehicle was moved into our panel section for us put through our signature body construction process involved in chemically joining the roof as well as silicon bronze welding all down the C pillars and our integrated storage compartments. Ooh, it's cold out there. All right, so I was wondering if that's it. No, that's not it. So I'm here now at uh, Creative for a quick checkup to see how she's going. Come and have a look at this thing. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Looking good, mate. Looking good. Look at that. So they're in the process now of what they call the, um, the fairing stage. So it's all... The, the, the roof has been bonded, the back wall has been welded in, the sides have been welded together. Uh, remember, there's two pieces of material, different materials here. You've got an aluminium roof, you've got steel sides and back. So one part gets bonded, the other part gets welded. So that's all happening now. Then they panel beat it, okay, bring it into, a, into shape, put the toolboxes in. And then what they do is they fair it. And they call that the fairing stage. And that's where they, they use a filler and they fair it all out, like as if you were doing panel beating. And then they're getting it ready then for uh, painting. It's then primed and painted in our state-of-the-art heated and ventilated booth. From there, it then moves over back next door to get the electrical done. The electrical componentry in these 300 series is very sophisticated and takes a lot of time to make sure that we get right in the conversion process from wagon to dual cab. The vehicle is then moved to retrim in order to ensure that the inside of the vehicle has a factory OEM finish like the rest of the vehicle as well. There she is. Just a quick check in on the build, see how it's going. Um, obviously something's happening here. This is the uh, rust proofing uh, bay. So you're getting some rust proofing happening. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go, look at that. This part is highly specialized for our vehicles which involve not only chemical rust proofing, but a factory enamel finish to give it that brand new vehicle look. Look at the chassis on this thing, it's massive. Absolutely massive. So this is the first time I've actually seen the chassis completed on a 300 conversion. Now it's 750, the length is 750 which is the perfect measurement to allow for access on certain bits and pieces. So they're a little bit different to the 200. You know, the 300 has different components in it. But um, they assure me they've, um, they've sorted all that out and um, this little sucker here is gonna be one hell of a rig. Can't wait to see what it's like and what it feels like and what it drives like and tows and, and that's what this truck's all about. It's all about like building that ultimate touring vehicle with dual cab, 
big canopy, towing capacity, all that sort of stuff. Once the vehicle leaves rust proofing, it'll then move into our accessory section where it'll receive suspension, wheels and tyres developed in collaboration with some of Australia's best four-wheel drive accessory brands. We've got long range tanks going in, we've got uh, suspension, all that will be done here. How's it going boys? Right, there you go. <laughs> there go. Oh, this going in my truck? Well, we're just about to do a quick fit up on it now and we'll get your sender in and then uh, that's a probably. That's a big tank, isn't it? So the Brown Davis tank is going to be going in, so long range tank. Tank, full replacement steel tank. To this day, I've been using, you know how long I've been using them? I don't know, how long? Oh, it's gotta be more than 10 years. Jeez. Yeah, 10 years I've been using a tank. I haven't, had, I haven't put a hole in one yet. <laughs> That's good, Cr touch wood. <laughs> Not air. <laughs> <laughs> You can see what comes out of it. That's like literally, that's what comes out of it. That is what's going in. That's pretty good. Fits good too by the looks of that. Like look at the shapes. Uh, there's a few more things to go. So as soon as it's finished here, suspension will be in. Alrighty, we're getting to the pointy end of the build. I say this every day because the pointy end's getting pretty sharp. Now, Outback Armour have developed a hit front struts. Coil over strut, same as the 200. It's fully adjustable in here like that. Make a couple of adjustments. Boom, you got 20 settings. Okay, just like the 200. Um, it's a big coil over strut sitting on the front, as you can see. Um, big reservoir, lots of oil, very capable bit of front end suspension. Now on top of that, to allow for the slight lift, now it's a two inch lift, which allows it to come up two inches from standard. So what we do is we put a diff drop kick kit in to, to look after the CVs and this thing here, a top arm. So that's the top A arm there that replaces the original arm. Got a little cap in under here, that's where your, your ball joint sits. So that pops out. As you can see, it's a bloody good seal without scratching it. I don't, ah, there we go. So you can see that's a nice seal, protects that ball joint in there. There she is, fully agree, fully greasable. And that's important, trust me, that is pretty important. The fact that that is fully sealed, no dust, no dirt, no water can get into your top ball joint. Very important little bit of gear for your top A-arm. That's where all that movement and all that load hooks into there. The other part is you gotta make this bit in here really strong as well. You can imagine how much impact is on that when you hit suspension bumps and things like that. It's uh, adjustable in here as well. There's a bit of thread going on here. You can adjust it. So all in all, the front suspension on this 300 is gonna be two inches higher. And uh, mate, I'll tell you what, it's gonna be some killer, some killer suspension. The rear, okay, just a quick look at the rear here. Set of heavy duty coils, heavy duty uh, shocks with a, what they call as a helper coil over the top as well. Uh, there's little bash plates in here to give you protection. All the rear suspension is in. And of course, don't forget the Airbag Man airbags, okay, which will be a remote adjustment as well. All in all, a really good suspension package to handle the load. All right, mate, I'm keen to see it. Obviously, you guys have done your bit. Yep, that's it. She's How did it come up, now. you reckon? Oh, look at that. It come up bloody oh, awesome. I think it's come up pretty fantastic, mate. And you've got all the fruit on it too, haven't you? Absolutely. Wheels, oh, tyres, wow. suspension, all your wiring's hooked up. Mate, it looks mint. That's it. Just missing the... Uh... What happened to the, the well body, the, the, my design of the well body? Well, what was that? You didn't like that idea? Look, mate, we... we Thought it was a good try, but um, we decided we're just going to stick to what we normally do. Uh, yeah, it was a good yeah. attempt, though. We all, uh, <laughs> uh, we all had some fun looking at that one, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, I had to have a crack, you know. I had to have a crack at it. Obviously, you didn't go with that one. But no, this looks good. I like it. It's bloody awesome. No, well done, mate. Well done. Make sure you thank the team Absolutely. how good it is because um, a lot of effort's gone into it, for sure. Absolutely. All right, mate, leave you to it. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to take it straight away because I, I haven't got time to waste. I've got to go and get this thing wrapped straight away. Absolutely. So, while doesn't have any Norwell tray and canopy on it, it'll get wrapped. And um, yeah, I've come up with a few ideas. Oh, very we'll see how we see. go. All right, mate, where's the keys? That's the start. Oh, that's a good question. Let's get them for you. <laughs>
Now it's over to the experts at Sinorama for the wrap. Hey mate, we've got the 300 here for you now. McCormack's are gonna take all this chrome out of it. I'm sort of thinking it needs a bit more black in it, you know what I mean? Because by the time you do canopy, yep. okay, there's gonna be some black in the canopy as well, yep. but the main color's gonna be white. Yep. What if we pull some black in the bonnet? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, sort of. Just follow some lines down from the. From yeah, just make this whole section like that in black and keep that white. And then down the sides, what if we brought the black down through and just blacken that? Yeah. We'll bring the canopy into the cap then, won't it? Yeah. Sure. Just boom, black. This will be white, off white, that satiny white. I don't, I don't like the gloss. I'm not a gloss man. Nah. All right, I'm going to leave it in your capable hands, mate. I've just called into uh, Norwell and of course the tray is going on right now. The canopy, it is still on its way. So they're just putting the tray on for today. So let's come and have a look and see how it is. And there it is. Look at that. How sharp does she look, boys? What do you think of the wrap? It's yeah, satin yeah. with the black. Yeah, no, I like it. No, it's looking pretty good. So basically what's going on is a tray and the reason why they're putting a tray on then a canopy and not just uh, a full-time canopy is this here, is having this, what they call the hoop, okay, of the tray, which sits up against, so the headboard, which sits up against the back wall of the, uh, the 300, it makes it look the part. So without it, it looks a bit sort of different and so what we've decided is we'll put the, the hoop in place, the backboard, up against the back of the, 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 the conversion there. And um, yeah, it does make a difference. So uh, they're just waiting, they're just putting on the uh, toolboxes. They've got to put a couple of, um, put the mud guards on. Uh, the back drawer should already be on. And yeah, the tail lights go in. The thing is drivable now, so we're actually getting somewhere. It's got to have the roof just finished off back at Sinorama, and then it goes to Bodie at McCormack's, and he starts all the frontal protection, roof rack, lighting, all that sort of stuff. Then it's got to come back here to Norwell to get the canopy done. Man, look at that. That just looks mint. I don't do chrome. I don't do gloss. I just like, I like satin colours, just plain satin colours, no real shine to them. I think it's because I'm too lazy, I don't like washing cars. You can see the difference there. Because these standard mirrors are going to be replaced with Clearview, the new Clearview 300 mirrors, you can see that's the satin, that's what it would, that's the original paint there, that, that gloss white. Nah, I do like this, I reckon this is great. Right, so she's gonna go on the hoist here at McCormack's. Now, I'll just go and grab Bodie wherever I can find him. Poor bugger's busy as hell. But I've got a load, there he is. I was just talking about you, mate, and it was all good. How are you, buddy? <laughs> How are you going? Very good. So, the 300, mate, it's getting closer to the finished date. I've got um, some gear in the back. Big bag of goodies there, yeah, mate. Big for bag us of to goodies. Get into. There's XTM winch in the back. There's, yeah, mate, there's a pallet of lights over there. Airbag stuff's got to go in. I've, I've even got some bloody floor mats from uh, Brown Davis, mate. Some of those 3D I've seen them, type the new ones. ones. 3D type ones. Yeah. They're yeah, right. They look good. This is the first time that you're going to see the new Rhino Rack. Okay, Series 6 roof rack. Check this thing out. Now, if you want to know the specs on it, it's 25% lighter. Every one of these extrusions now has somewhere to mount accessories to it, including the cross members. If you have a look here, they've got sections where you can mount it. Okay, so 25% lighter. It's now more aerodynamically tuned. Okay, so, and you'll see this. Have a look in the front here. It's, that's what makes it lighter because it's now thinner. Have a look at those aerodynamics of that front section of this, of this roof rack. And that's a big thing when it comes to fuel economy, uh, noise, wind noise and fuel economy, which is what a lot of people are wanting these days. They want that better fuel economy when they stick roof racks on and all that sort of stuff. So 
Well done, uh, Rhino Rack. I'm going to chuck it on top here on the 300. So to get things started, let's get, okay, I'm going to use all these sections in here and I'm going to use the Zwift lock, all right? So that's the new Zwift lock system that Rhino Rack have developed and that's what all these are set up for. If you have a look, look at that. And in here as well, you can fit accessories in the cross members. Man, this is a pretty cool setup. XTM again, Jace. Good gear, isn't it? XTM. You fit some of the most expensive lights on the market in this workshop, right? I do, correct. Yeah. yeah. I fit probably the best value light on value the market. Value for money, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you got to remember, I've tested it. Yeah. I rattle the shit out of it. I, I'm humming that thing all night. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it goes the distance and no fail. And I still get, I, I've had other lights before. Yeah. I've used other brands, expensive brands, and I've gone, man, I can't even see the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet this is a fraction of the price. The price. I, I don't get and it, man. it gets the longevity. I don't know, mate, but I'd, seriously, if I thought it was crap, I'd be throwing it, trust me, as quick as look at you. Oh, and it's I'd not. I believe you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I need things to work, mate. Yeah. If they don't work, you know what happens, don't you? I'm stuck in the bush with Nothing. shit that doesn't work. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not going to do that after 16 years of doing this job, mate. No way. You know, there goes my aerodynamics out the window, but at least I started with the right rack. Yeah, the right rack, mate, that's for sure. All right, backbone going on. Behind the back toolbox here, I'm gonna run a water pump. So we bolt it onto the back of the toolbox and put a tap outlet there, because this is the kitchen side of the vehicle. Now I run this on all my trucks. Now the reason for that is what happens is the water, there's a gravity fed, okay, there's a water tank underneath that comes with the Norweld trays and it's gravity fed to the right hand side. So what I normally do is I leave that, I split it into two, so I put a T piece and I run the other line to the other side here where the kitchen side is. I bolt a water pump in, pressure pump, hook her up, and I got a tap here on my kitchen side where it just makes it easier if I need some water, you know, make a cup, cup of coffee or something like that. Simon really likes the water pump feature, so I made sure that went into all the vehicles. So I'm just whacking that in now. Yeah, so these, these are literally the prototypes. All right. Yeah. As a premium dealer, I can't believe that Clearview has given us the opportunity to fit the only set of 300 Clearview mirrors in captivity. All right, so this is the bar that's going on the 300 now. It's just come out of the paint bay. Mate, it is still warm. That's how, um, that's how quickly uh, things are getting done around here. So you can see we've done a two-tone set up here. So it's actually got a coarse finish on this top in the black. And then this is a smoother finish. And this is a satin white. Remember, it's got to match the satin wrap. So you look between the two. Full on match there, identical match. He's done really well on this one. It's little things like that that just is going to make this truck. All right, so today the canopy goes on. It's here, ready to go on. It's already been pre wired, so 90% of the wiring is done with all the Red Arc gear. Don't forget the Rogue system, which is that new system from Red Arc. That'll be cool. Okay, here it is over here. Let's have a quick squeeze. It's looking good. Yeah, she's almost there. So the only thing I think that's for the, the slide, and this will be for the Your kitchen. View, yes. Pantry kitchen. Yeah. Copy that. Awesome. Well, there we go. That's going to be pretty cool. The boys at Norweld have cracked on and finished the canopy. Have a look at it. Man, that looks like an absolute weapon. And it's not even finished yet. It's still got more to go, but how cool is that? Quick look inside. Mate, they do a good job, mate. They do a really good job here at Norwell. Just 
it's just awesome. It's just good, solid, well-made stuff. You know, every time you rock up here, that you're gonna get this awesome package. It just works, and it works well. All right, so I need the keys, and I gotta get this sucker around to McCormack so we can keep going on this build. And I know the sun's going down, I've still got more work to do. Hey mate, how we going? Mate, I'm, I'm eating on the run, we're that flat On the out. run, flat out. Flat stick, buddy. Look, copy good. that. Yeah, I know. Well, um, last night we pulled the bumper off and I was trying to get the mirrors done, so I'm going to finish off the mirrors. Yep. All right, I'll get that done. Um, I see you guys have been full steam ahead on the bar. That's yep. good. Brackets, you got to start putting the brackets on. So brackets are on, we'll put the bar on. We've got to put the winch in. Oh, the winch goes in after. After. Yeah. And We've then got a winch, haven't we? And then we'll go onto the canopy. All right. like the way this bars come together, the colours and everything. You'll notice there's no winch in there. Now the beauty of these bars, the off-road animal bars, is you can put the winch in after. So you can take that winch in and out at your leisure. You don't have to take the bar off, which is a very cool feature. All right, so we're going to install this little sucker here. It's the X-Track 80 Pro. Now, it's, um, mate, this is a cool little bit of kit. It's got um, a two-watt loudspeaker in it. It's a remote system so that you can put, you know, it's compact, fits in under the dash like that, all right? It's also got a cool app that you can connect to it to um, give you GPS locations. Uh, it's got the, the awesome replay function. So I may say, what was that? You just go boom and it'll replay for you. So you could get what he said. And of course we got the little uh, magnetic mount and I'll just find the bits for that. There's a little, the little ma magnetic mount, which is one of the one of the top features that I reckon would help for ease of mounting and locating your your handset on your on your UHF. Really cool little unit, but it's coupled to the uh, heavy duty aerial too at the front. You got to have those good heavy duty aerials. I've gone with a longer aerial so I can get as much range when we're out in the field. Um, and remember. That communication between the car, car in front, car behind, it's critical. All right, so it's early morning and we've got literally all hands on deck. So I've brought the truck back from McCormack's to my uh, workshop. It's the weekend. And uh, what better way to do the weekend is to play around with trucks and build shit. And we've got pretty much a blank canvas here for the canopy. If you have a look inside, have a look at this. It's just a big open canopy, this one. So different, different style to what we're normally used to because we've got a clear view power slide going in there with kitchen pantry and we've got an upright fridge there. So in order to fit all that and, and, and you know, get, the, get it in here, shelves and all that sort of stuff, we've gone with an open style. So in order, in order to um, sort of enclose all this, we're just gonna make up a frame. I started working on a frame here so that we can box this up, carpet it, and then Stewie's in the process of carpeting it now. So we get some carpet in there. And Mitch, he's gonna start the awnings because we gotta get a rooftop tent, we gotta get Batwing uh, 2.5 Sunseeker, Sunseeker this side, Batwing that side, snorkel, exhaust, and uh, hose reel, compressor, a few little bits and pieces, mate. And this truck, oh, spare wheels mounted, and this truck will be literally done. I reckon a day's work, and we've got this job done. So now we'll get the bat wing awning on this side. Now remember that you gotta get it at the right distance here so that the, the 270 part can come right around. One last check on the door. I would like a glove. I've got another awning to put on the other side which is the Sunseeker 2.5. 
But in the meantime, we're going to start thinking about getting the spare out so that we can put an exhaust system under, but you're going to finish off the front. Yep, I'll finish the front. And I'll we'll finish the now. front. I'm going to chuck some spares on. That's good. We are getting there. G'day guys, this is the new rooftop tent from Campos 4x4 and it's got some cool new features. Now, this one has the full wraparound awning. We've got this awesome quilted design, okay, in the roof lining. There is also a little pocketer section here so you can put stuff in. We've got a couple of little side pockets there. There is also power, so it has a power board in there for a SIG socket and two USBs. It has LED strip lights inside so you can light the place up. It's got an awesome 70 mil foam quilted mattress, a moisture resistant mat underneath. It's a little bit more lightweight and compact compared to our other rooftop tent. Cam lock latches, which are easier to open and close. The roof has a waterproof two pack resin finish to give it a really watertight and tough membrane on the top of your rooftop tent. Comes with lightweight roof racks for the top. And you'll notice these big, generous windows. All three windows are huge. A lot of air can flow through for especially those hot climates up north, or you can just zip them right up down south when it's cold. The vents up the top here, you can seal them off, or you can peel the little tabs away and let the air flow through. So after a fair bit of testing up north, in the Kimberley and over in Cape York, we'd have to say that this rooftop tent is ready to go on to your next adventure. Now, if you get a chance, go on to Campos 4x4 Shop Online. It's the Campos 4x4 new compact design rooftop tent, or check out your local Campos 4x4 dealer. Anyway, back to the adventure. Stowets for the... Uh Shovels. I'm going to stick a shovel on this side here so we can dig holes. I got a surprise for you. Surprise, surprise. Steak burger? No, not steak burger. That's, the, that's me dad there behind you. Put the camera on him. Everyone will see how good looking he is. There he is. <laughs> The How you going, mate? You want me to take one of those? Hey, mate, I'll grab that'd be great, one. young fella. Look at this. <laughs> Come here, Stewie, have a look at this. Here we are. Stewie. The workers. Mitch. Cheers, mate. There you go. How good's that? Look at that. All right. This is the new beer, mate, right? Cheers. 4B, boys. What do you reckon? A couple of six packs of these. So good, it's bad. All right, so we can't be sitting around here all day drinking beer. Shopping truck. That's perfect. Okay, these are new Max Trax holders, these things. And we've already got the little stowets on the bottom. Like that. All I need is my tool, and let's stick her on the roof. All right, I need some Max Tracks now. Hey Mitch, you want to chuck us up a couple of Max Tracks? Yep, here we go. Oh yeah, perfect. Locked. How good's that? Shovel, Max Tracks, boom. If you have a look there, there's the old system there, and this is the new stainless steel system. So Manta make it out of a 304 grade stainless steel. And if you have a look at the back, it's got this awesome tailpipe section on the back here in full stainless, little badge on it, looks really good. Okay, it's gonna sound a little bit better. Now it is DPF backed, all right? So, um, it, you know, it can help with the flow a little bit, but because of that DPF, there's not a lot you can do. It's a lot more durable, so it can handle the tough knocks and the vibrations that come from four-wheel driving or off-roading. Let's get this new sucker in, flick the old one. Man, look at that, that is just gonna look awesome. Nice little dump pipe at the back there. All right, twin turbo V6, here we come. We've got two 200 amp hour lithium deep cycle batteries, okay? And this whole system here with the Rogue and the uh, Red Vision system, okay, with your uh, BMS, okay? 
This thing over here, that's called a shunt. And then we got what's this thing here, which is our um, 2000 watt sine wave inverter. Now this thing here called the Rode, TVMS Rode, that is where all the switching comes from, okay? So there's 10 outlets there, 10, 10 amps. That's where all the, all the little switch wires go in, okay? That then integrate with the Red Vision system. A cool little feature to this truck. Brown Davis have sent me these 3D floor mats that they've, that they've got. Now we've got a set in the um, in the D-Max as well. Putting a set in the 300, slips in like that, perfectly to the 300. Oh, I love it. That's very nice. And the best part I like. This is the part I like. The fact that it comes up over these carpet areas. See that? It's got that extra lip here because that cops an absolute flogging from day to day. Boots, mud, sand, rocks, you name it. And it just follows the contours like that. And it's got a big deep dish. So, you know, even water, it'll hold water. So that's pretty good. And at the end of the day, you just rip it out, flick all the crap off it. Yeah, back one goes in. Oh, look at that. Perfect, that'll keep it clean. Now, last of all, I'm gonna get some seat covers on this thing. Superfit seat covers, Toyota 300 series, sports wagon, driver and passenger buckets. Here we go. Now, these are a denim seat cover. So the advantage of the denim is they're a lot, they're, they're nice and soft to the touch and yet they're still very, very durable. You know, there's a bit of thickness about them. Like a pair of denim jeans, pretty much, but they're nice and black. I like these ones the best. You know, they'll take a beating. <laughs> So here we are, we're in the Rhino tuning room. This is where all the horsepower is made. Now, the twin turbo V6, which is the new motor sitting in the uh, 300 series Land Cruiser. Okay, it's got two turbos, just like the old V8, but it's a V6. Now, talk is that they get a lot more out of the twin turbo V6 than they got out of the V8. So I'm curious to see how much horsepower we are gonna get out of it. We're not gonna go full noise on this thing, okay? We're going to give it a bit of a tickle and uh, see what sort of horsepower we can develop. Just so that it's a, you know, it gets good fuel economy and, and got that bit extra torque for pulling up the hills when you're towing, you know, and the fact that I'm carrying a little bit extra weight. So, mate, what do you reckon? May are about to put a little tune in the 300, see how she go. goes, eh? Well, I need bulk horsepower, bulk torque, best fuel economy you can find, yep. and keep it nice and cool. And safe. And safe. Too easy. That now, can be done. Do you reckon these develop more horsepower? Yeah, they will do, but you probably need to upgrade a few things for it to happen. But like the gearbox, the diffs, intercoolers, the shafts, intercoolers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're talking but about. But can be done. Just to keep the temperature down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Keep it safe for us. Well, just all we want. It's going to be hot up north, so we just want something. Like I said, don't go too nasty. Just give it a little bit of bit of horsepower and make it feel bit a bit better to drive, mate. That's yeah. like a, like I said before. A bit of a tickle. Can't be done. <laughs> too easy, mate. All right, no dramas. We started at about 135 kilowatts and we boosted her up about 35 kilowatts, which is about 50 odd horsepower. So just a mild tune, 50 horsepower at the rear wheels that is. So that's the gain that we've got. And of course, um, the, what are we getting, the Newton meters of torque? Yeah, we've gone from about 447 up to about 511. Now you can get these up to nearly a thousand Newton meters. We're not going that drastic just yet. It's a brand new car, calm down. And that's job done for the build. Now let's check out how it all comes together. I think I'm done. Can you believe it? This has been an absolute mammoth task building this truck. Now, you've got to take your hat off to Creative Conversions because they have turned a 300 series GXL Land Cruiser wagon, okay, brand new, twin turbo V6, and mate, two months later, outrolled a dual cab 300 series Land Cruiser. And here it is behind me. Without mucking around, let's get a look 
at the new All for Adventure 300 Series Adventure Ute. We put a canopy on the back, so it was a 700mm extension to allow you to put a full size canopy and tray. So it's a, it's a removable canopy and a tray. Okay, not that I'm going to really remove it, but it's that sort of style. Basically, it was built around that package. So first thing you do with the 300 series Land Cruiser is we've got to put suspension in it. And the reason why we've got to put that upgraded suspension is because it's got a 4.2 ton towing. It's got, uh, what is it now? Let me get these numbers right. A 4495 GVM and it's got a GCM, which is a gross combined mass. So that's what you can tow and what you can carry of 8.2 ton. So very impressive numbers, extremely impressive numbers, but only achievable, okay, by the, by the fact that it is being converted from a wagon into a dual cab ute. Now the 700, 700 mil extension in there, and it's that 700 mils extension that makes the creative conversion package such a good towing package is because you've got length in the chassis. It's all strengthened, the diffs are strengthened, all that sort of stuff. The, the suspension is fully upgraded, so Outback Armour. Now it's a two inch lift, heavy duty springs. It's got helper coils on the rear shocks. It's got airbags to assist that as well inside the coil, so it's full coil sprung at the back. It's got A-arms to get the geometrics right with the steering and the lift. They're fully adjustable. So the Outback Armour shock absorbers are fully adjustable. They've got 20 settings in them. So overall, the suspension has come together really, really well to hold the weight that these things are gonna be, uh, you know, on their tow bar and also carry with the canopy. Now, as you can see, I've packed it from top to rear. Awnings, rooftop tent, full canopy, fridges, drawers, batteries, you name it. Without leaving nothing like literally finding everything and anything that I could put on this truck that would work with it. All the extra accessories got fitted by McCormack's, right? So between Creative Conversions, McCormack's and Norweld, the rest of the gear goes on. So you've got a bull bar here from Off-Road Animal, a two color bull bar, which I reckon looks pretty, pretty mint. It's got a full satin wrap from the guys at uh, Sinorama there at Nunda. If you have a look, we've got some XTM spotties on the front there. We've got a light bar in the front in the bull bar. We've got an XTM winch in the front of it. We've got light bars on the roof. So there's two 41 inch light bars on the roof rack. A full Brown Davis bash plate. So there's, there's a full set of bash plates underneath this truck from Brown Davis. And if you come down the side, I put the thing on a set of ROHs. So nice looking rim. They've got that silver in it with the black. We've got the, the mud terrains from Black Bear, six tires and all. Now, the one thing about the Black Bear tyres is they've got that really wide sort of stance about them. They're only a 285, okay, so they're not a 35, they're only a 33. Um, but they fit nicely in that hole there. Uh, you see I've got some nice looking flares as well. I've got that idea from when I did the uh, wagon build on the 300, the Adventure 300. Uh, mirrors, we've got the 300 series Land Cruiser mirrors, okay, power fold, indicate, camera, you know, the whole shoot and match which is pretty cool. They're actually not even out yet. Uh, these are like prototype stuff going on this truck. So clear view mirrors, extendable, the, the, you know, the usual when it comes to clear view. Have a look here as well from clear view. See that one? Got the sweet power boards on there. Had them on my 200, now I've got them on the 300. Uh, roof rack, we've got ourselves a modified. So when I mean modified, it's been obviously it's a, it, you can't fit a wagon rack on there, so you've got to have a modified dual cab rack. So thanks to the guys at Rhino Rack, we, they've done a modified rack and the new design rack. So it's the new improved version, which is aerodynamic, uh, you know, so less wind resistance, less drag, um, lower profile. Just generally, it's their new Series 6. So you'll get to see that a few you know, when you watch when in the build, you would have seen that. So on that Rhino Rack roof rack, you can see that we've got the recovery shovel and we've got the Max Tracks up there as well. You've got a set of uh, four extremes and the new Max Tracks holder 
from Rhino Rack as well, which is a pretty cool system. We've got some lighting there, some side lighting. Uh, also from Rhino Rack, a 2.5 Sunseeker. On the other side, we've got a bat wing. I'll get them out shortly. This is where the tire used to sit, okay? So the spare, this is where the tire used to be. 700 mil back, that's where it is now. So, you know, access into these like that. You've got storage compartments in there, which is pretty cool. By the way, it's, it's, it works on the central locking as well, so it can be locked. That's a pretty cool setup, like that. Um, obviously water tank, I've got a gravity fed on this side. Uh, on the other side, we've got a pressure pump, all right? On the roof, so what I've done is I've gone and put a Camp Boss rooftop tent on, and this is our new, okay, this is a new version of the rooftop tent from Camp Boss. It's pretty cool. Uh, I haven't even given it a proper name yet, but it's pretty much, um, you know, version two of one of our rooftop tents. We'll pop that out in a minute. Okay, everything else is pretty straightforward. I don't have a rear winch on this truck. I didn't end up putting a rear winch mainly because, um, I, I, you know, it was too tight. There, was, there wasn't enough room in there. Maybe down the track, I might be able to squeeze one in. But yeah, twin spares. Come around here, um, we've put a kick ass exhaust system in it from Manta. Okay, so it's three inch, comes is a DPF backed exhaust, stainless steel 304, comes three inch and then goes all the way to a four inch tailpipe. Okay, no muffler, looks a million bucks, all right. On this side, we'll open up the canopy. Let's get into the, uh, the workstation in here, mate. This is, you're gonna enjoy, this is pretty cool. There we go. So we've got an upright fridge here, but this is what you'll like. I've put a little 44 My Coolman in here, okay? Because I was gonna use that as a freezer. So it's sitting in there perfectly, good access. You know, you don't wanna, you don't wanna get in there too much. All right, so you only wanna just be in there every now and again. This one, okay, this is the Clearview kitchen. So this will be the kitchen part. All right, let's have a look here. And um, we're gonna drop this down. This is the Clearview power slide. How cool is that? So you pop the power slide down, pull the kitchen out, there she goes. Look at this, it's so new, I haven't even, haven't even taken the, um, the wash tub out <laughs> of its box. So there she goes, you know, and you're, you're familiar with one of these as well. We've used them a lot on the show. There it is, you've got that compartment, you've got that compartment, you've got access into here. Okay, so storage, so that's the Clearview kitchen, nicely sitting in there, um, works perfectly for what, for this setup. As you can see, it's all sort of gutted and that's how we made the space in there. All right, that's pretty cool. So we'll close that back up. Now, to run the whole, this whole system, okay, we use a full Red Arc package. So it's a BMS, battery management system, and it's the, um, Let's close that, okay. So it's the Red Vision, so it's coupled with the Red Vision and the Rogue. Basically, the Rogue is your switching system, okay, and your Red Vision is your control box and, and, and display setup. So they're coupled together, I say, they're compatible. And I've got 400 amp hours of lithium, so Red Arc lithium battery, so two 200 amp hour lithiums. All right, so they're on the other side, which I'll show you shortly. So on this side, I've got a display, Red Vision display. So I've got access to it there. I've got, um, you know, USB, all that sort of stuff there. Now, the other thing what I've got is because I'm using the battery management system, it's a 30 amp, 240 N, so AC and DC charger. So DC using the, um, the vehicle, AC using when we put power into it, and also solar. There is also a 1250, okay? Um, a BS1250, which is basically, it's a 50 amp DC charger. So couple that with the, um, the 30 amp BMS, okay, battery management system, you've got 80 amps of charge when the engine's running. So those batteries will get topped up really quickly when the engine's on. Okay, so that's this side. Let's go around to the other side. So when you open up this side, okay, you'll see the massive space you've got here for storage. And also, we've, we've designed and incorporated this box in here to house the batteries and storage. Now, so that you don't have to run around all to the other side to operate things like compressor, 
I've got a second unit here so that I can operate anything. So it's a piggyback unit. Anything over there can be operated here. So if I want to run the compressor, I want to run lighting like that. Okay, and all that is running through that rogue system. All right. So basically 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter to run anything, you know, hair dryer or whatever, your little, um, little sandwich maker, or you want to run a bloody, um, you can even run a deep fryer, a little deep fryer. Um, what do they got these days? Induction cooktops, you can run those things. All right. Uh, and a couple of USB and SIG sockets there. Uh, we've got a full sound system in here. So remote controlled here. I can remote control that from sitting beside the fire. That's just a uh, exo gear. Um, that basically is a little 500 watt speaker with lighting as well. It's got some cool lighting features in there. You can see that and it can all be done with the remote control. That's the cool part about it. Change colors and do all sorts of things. Switch that sucker off, put this one on. You know, look at the colors. So you can imagine that at night, bit of bush doof, so which is pretty cool. And then you just switch him off. Just like that, job done. So that'll hook up to your phone, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we've got a shelf in here, okay, for storage, which is pretty cool as well. Now, that's the canopy, all right? Let's have a look at the awnings and the rooftop tent. So first of all, we've got a 2.5 Sunseeker on here. On the other side, you've got the Batwing. There she is, the Batwing awning, like that. And of course, the rooftop tent. So we can see inside the rooftop tent, I'll flick her up. Now, the beauty of this, uh, little, this rooftop tent here is slightly, slightly shorter in length, okay? So a little bit more compact, um, probably a fraction lighter when it comes to weight. But overall, it's just uh, a really cool, compact, compact tent. I'll just flip that over. It's got side awnings as well, um, which I won't set up, but if you have a look inside here, it looks pretty cool. It's got some good lighting in there. It's got some plush trim. And then now that that's up, I can then uh, put out my bat wing. Well, there you go, the 270 awning, Camp Boss rooftop tent. Don't forget we've got a fat snorkel sitting over here. I forgot to mention this one. This is the uh, fat integrated tube snorkel, which look, it looks, I, I like them because they look really good. They're very sleek, sit beside the vehicle like that, nice and tidy. Now that we've been through the canopy, rooftop tent, we've got that awning on there. Let's have a quick look inside, all right? So you go in there and I'll come around the other side. Brown Davis, remember, does the uh, the bash plates underneath. They've also put the long range tank in. Uh, you hear me, you know, you would have heard me talking about the long range tank, which is pretty cool. But these little integrated floor mats are pretty cool. So on the on the bull bar, of course, we've got the unit and heavy duty off road UHF aerial, coupled with the X Track 80 Pro. Comes with the app that allows you to track um, your mate if he's transmitted. Uh, you can bring up the app on a get this satellite map and you can actually see his location in relation to yours which is pretty cool as long as he's transmitted with your receiver um, which I, I think that's that's next level stuff so not just a UHF radio for talking to your mate anymore it's you can track them and find out where they are and if they're lost they can find you you know, and give them directions, all that sort of stuff. So we've also got the crash cams, okay? So the crash cameras are sitting there. Um, they've been incorporated into there. Don't forget the seat covers. Put a great set of Superfit seat covers on. These are the denim ones to protect these cloth seats. So all in all, the, this this whole package, this, this 300 series dual cab ute, oh, I, I think it's come together really well and, and you, and, you know, so many man hours have gone into it. Just, just my team alone, um, Stewie, Mitch, and myself, Cormax, their guys have, have done a bulk of the work as well. But mate, hats off to Creative Conversions. This is an absolute A1 conversion job on this truck. We're gonna take it out into um, some of the toughest terrain, 
uh, some of the most remote places in Australia very, very shortly and give it a hell of a test, but I reckon it'll be fine. And by the way, I did ask them to put an extra heavy duty drive shaft in the back, <laughs> just for that reason. Now, this truck doesn't have any diff lock. That's the only thing I don't have. I haven't put any diff locks in it yet. Um, I've just got, you know, the normal um, drive modes and, and central locking that um, comes with the, the Toyota. Well, there you go, guys. That is it. The 300 series Land Cruiser dual cab ute ready for the ultimate touring adventure.